Why, hello there! Welcome to Maraxo's Reviews and How-Tos. Uh, my name is Brian, and as a word of warning, uh, I like to do proper introductions on my videos. So, if you're like my dad and just want to get straight to the point and are not interested in watching the intro, uh, you can expand the video description below and use the timestamps there to skip ahead to what you want to see. For those of you that enjoy a good preface to a video, then just sit back and relax because here we go. In my last video, I reviewed the WD My Passport Wireless Pro, which is a wireless external hard drive. And in that video, I made mention that in my next video, that being this video, I would go more into depth on using the Wireless Pro as a portable media server. My wife and I have a 2006 Toyota Sienna minivan, which has a built-in DVD player, uh, which has been a great way to keep our two daughters entertained on long road trips. However, our oldest daughter will soon be turning 12, and her taste in movies is understandably beginning to differ from that of her 8-year-old sister, which has more than once sparked uh, what I'm sure everyone with siblings is familiar with, the argument of, It's my turn to choose a movie! Nuh-uh, it's my turn! We first looked into getting two portable DVD players, but it's nearly 2019 and physical media is all but dead, so I decided to look into a more modern solution. I'd heard of wireless hard drives before, uh, over the past several years, and heard that you could stream files from them directly to a computer or a smartphone or a tablet or whatever, but I never really looked into them and admittedly uh, didn't know that much about them. But if the stuff I'd heard was true, I thought this could be a possibility for us. Very quickly, as I began looking into them, I came across the My Passport Wireless Pro because when you Google wireless hard drive, it's the first one that comes up. <laughs> The thing that interested me the most about the Wireless Pro was that it said it can be used as a Plex media server. Uh, for those of you that are already familiar with Plex, you know what a great media serving solution it is. And for those of you that don't, I hope that this video will not only give you a good introduction to Plex, but also show you uh, just how cool using the My Passport Wireless Pro as a portable media device really is. Getting Plex 7 running on the Wireless Pro is as painless as passing gas in a Bath & Body Works store. Not that I know, know anything about that. First, you'll need to log into the Wireless Pro's dashboard from a computer. As far as I know, you can't do this through the mobile app. Uh, once in the dashboard, you'll need to navigate to the Media tab where you will see the Plex Media Server app ready to be installed. Click on install and it will let you know that by installing Plex, the Twonky server will be turned off, which we don't care about. So all that's left is to click install one more time and the installation will begin. Uh, installing the Plex app takes uh, about a minute and once it's done, we'll need to configure our new server. If you're already a Plex user, then this screen should be fairly familiar to you. You just need to log into your Plex account. If you don't yet have a Plex account, then you'll of course need to create one. A basic membership is totally free and includes a lot of great features. There is a one-time fee of $5 to install the app on client devices like smartphones and tablets, uh, but to use it with a laptop via a web browser is totally free. The nice thing about the $5 fee for the app on mobile devices is it is associated with your account. So if you're an Android user and buy the app through Google Play, uh, that purchase is associated with your Google Play account. So you can then install the app to other client devices without having to pay the $5 fee again. And the same thing goes with iOS devices. Uh, if you're brand new to Plex and you've never set up a Plex server before, then you're not going to be dumped into the main dashboard screen like I am here. I don't remember exactly what it does, but at some point it's going to ask you to add folders to your library. Uh, to do that from this screen that I'm on now, I just need to click the plus sign here next to where it says libraries, and then we'll see this screen. The cool thing about Plex is it allows you to access all of your media if you want to use it for that. You can use it for movies, TV shows, music, and even your personal uh, photos or videos. 
Since the purpose of this video is to use the My Passport Wireless Pro as a portable wireless movie server, uh, we're going to select movies as our library type, at which point we can give our library a name. And for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to call it example and click next. Now we need to browse for our media folder. I've already loaded a bunch of movies onto the My Passport Wireless Pro. Um, you'll obviously need to load your movies onto your drive to be able to add them to your library. Now, if you don't have digital copies of your movie library already, I recently made a video where I show how to copy DVD and Blu-ray discs for this very purpose. And you can check out that video in the cards in the upper right of your screen right now. And I have also linked it in the video description. One of the features of Plex that a lot of people really love is its ability to transcode video files to your client devices. Um, this is something the Wireless Pro is not capable of doing, however. Its CPU is simply not powerful enough, so any movies you plan to stream from the Wireless Pro is going to need to be saved in a format that can be played natively on your client devices. One other thing I feel I should mention before we return to adding a folder to your library is to get the best experience with Plex, you're going to want to organize your movies in this manner. You'll want to name the file using the title of the movie and also include the date the movie was released. You'll then want to place that movie file into a folder of the exact same name. I'll show you why this is important in a little bit. You can, of course, organize your movies any way you want after that. Uh, if you'd like to break them up into genres, you're welcome to do that. Uh, as for me, I've just put everything into one movies folder. Okay, so we have our movies converted into digital format, properly named, organized, and loaded onto the My Passport Wireless Pro, and are ready to add that folder to our library. To get to my movies, I need to navigate to storage, where you can see I have a couple of folders, uh, Barbie movies and movies. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Barbie movies? So, I have two daughters. What's it to you? Anyway, you can then click on the folder you want to add. Click Add which then brings us to this screen where we will click Add Library and Plex will add that folder to your library. The more movies you have in your library, the longer this next process is going to take because what Plex is doing now is going to the internet to find the movie box art and other information which makes their UI look all official and professional as, as well as just feel more user friendly. This is the reason you want to carefully name and organize your movies. Uh, make sure they're spelled correctly and that you have the year the film was released as that makes it much easier for Plex to find your movie and load the correct movie jacket and all the other information. Now, before we can take our portable Plex server on the go with us, there's two important things we need to do in the Plex settings which will allow us to stream our content without having a connection to the internet. First up, let's go into settings here. To do what we need to do, we're going to want to show advanced and at the top of our screen, we're going to click on server. On this screen, we're going to go to network here on the left hand side of the screen and then scroll down to the field that says list of IP addresses and networks that are allowed without authorization. Here we can either type in the IP addresses of all the devices that we'll be connecting to our little server or use a net mask, which is a much easier way to go about it. In the case of the My Passport Wireless Pro, it uses 192.168.1.whatever for IP addresses of connected devices. So in this field, you're going to want to enter in 192.168.1 slash 255.255.255.0. Next up, we want to go back over to the left here and click on DLNA. Check the box at the top of the list that says enable the DLNA server. And now, even when we aren't connected to the internet, we can connect to the Wireless Pro on a laptop, smartphone, or tablet, launch the Plex app, and stream our content just like we would from any other Plex server. In my review video of the My Passport Wireless Pro, I tested how long the battery lasts while running two simultaneous video streams since that's going to be the scenario my Wireless Pro is going to be experiencing the most. 
and the battery lasted a full six hours. Now, running two simultaneous streams is pretty cool, but what if you have two clients watching the same movie at the exact same time? That works just fine. Doesn't say it on the box or anywhere in the included documentation, but I did find some information on WD's website that says the My Passport Wireless Pro is capable of supporting up to eight simultaneous eight megabyte per second streams. So naturally we got to give it a try. While using the Plex app on my client devices, I was able to get six simultaneous streams working. But once I tried to connect the seventh device, things started crapping out. Uh, two of the six streams stopped playing and the wonderful wheel of misfortune began circling around. Since device number seven kicked off our problem, I disconnected it from the wireless pro, but that still didn't fix it. Uh, after that, I was only able to get five streams running, but even then playback would periodically stop, buffer for a little bit on several of the clients and then resume again. Uh, prior to connecting the seventh device, I had six streams running flawlessly, so I'm not sure what the deal was exactly. To be fair, the stuff I read never said anything about supporting eight simultaneous streams while using the Plex app. So I then switched to the WD MyCloud app, which is free by the way, and as you can witness here, was able to get eight simultaneous video streams playing. I know there's got to be at least a few of you watching that are sitting there wondering, okay, so it'll do eight simultaneous streams. How about nine? I did try that. And the ninth device was unable to connect. So it appears that eight devices is the absolute maximum. The My Passport Wireless Pro can have connected to it at a single time. There you have it. That's how to set up and use the My Passport Wireless Pro as a portable Plex media server. Uh, my wife, my two daughters and I recently went on a road trip where we were on the road for about nine hours in each direction and having our kids be able to stream whatever movie they wanted uh, from the Wireless Pro helped make the trip both for them and for us much more enjoyable. If you're still here watching right now, I'd like to say thanks for sticking around till the end. You are awesome. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up before you take off, uh, leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos from me, consider subscribing to my channel. Subscribing is 100% free. If you're interested in picking up a WD My Passport Wireless Pro for yourself to use as a portable Plex server, or just to use because it's cool, I've placed a link to my Amazon store in the video description where you can pick up one of your very own. And just as full disclosure here, that uh, I am an Amazon affiliate, so you doing that would be helping my channel, and I thank you for that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I look forward to hanging out again in my next video. We'll catch you later.